Carla Sands is an eighth generation Pennsylvanian. Her ancestors fought the American Revolution and the Civil War, and she's currently serving as the vice chair of the Center for Energy and Environment at America First Policy Institute. She was appointed by President Trump in 2017 to represent the United States as ambassador to Denmark, Greenland, and the Faroe Islands. And prior to her ambassadorship in 2017 to 2021, Carla became the first woman to serve as the chairman and CEO of Vintage Capital Group. She also served on the boards of Pepperdine University, the Los Angeles Police Foundation, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles, UCLA School of Arts and Architecture. She is now our guest in the Economic War Room. Welcome, Carla. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Well, I am so pleased and honored to have you. Let's start with the, the fact that you were ambassador to Denmark. That's kind of an amazing and cool thing. I mean, pick my ambassadorships. Denmark would be near the top of the list. What was it like serving under President Trump? You know, Kevin, it was the honor of my lifetime to uh, serve as his ambassador. And um, we had, you know, um, issues, complicated issues. You wouldn't think so going to Denmark, but it's a kingdom. So there's Denmark, Greenland, and the Faroe Islands. So my team and I worked every day to create jobs here at home in the United States and to secure our country from Russia and China. And we actually increased U.S. exports while I was the U.S. ambassador by 43 percent and yep, trade. And then also uh, we worked to ban uh, Huawei, the Chinese made 5G from the kingdom. It was the first EU foreign minister. The Danish foreign minister came out and said, we're not going to use 5G equipment from uh, non-democratic nations. And then we also blocked working with the White House, um, the Russian gas pipeline, Nord Stream 2. The only place it was never completed was my area of responsibility. Um, and we were very proud of that. And we had uh, the first year it was in Danish water, second year in their exclusive economic zone. And the third year I had the threat of sanctions. And so it was a, it was a success. That's fantastic. Well, you put America first which is kind of an interesting position. I mean, that's what we would expect our ambassadors to do, but it doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, talk about the contrast between the Trump ambassadors and the Biden ambassadors. Yes, well, you know, and I, I didn't know how different it really is until I started reading OIG reports. These are public facing reports that the State Department puts out about their ambassadors. It basically grades their performance if they if they look at the front office. And reading those, you can see, and my team verified, and that most of them are Democrats, that uh, Democrat administrations are much more chaotic than Republican administrations. And the ambassadors don't often come from the, pub, the private sector, and they lack the skills to lead an embassy. And so as a matter of fact, uh, the Trump and Trump ambassadors had huge successes at post, and we really were able to counter China in a strong way. And if not for Joe Biden saying to Putin, I'm not going to sanction Nord Stream 2, the Russian gas pipeline, not saying from the podium, a minor incursion into Ukraine, we're not going to pay any attention to that. If he hadn't said those things and had his disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal, I do not believe that Russia would have invaded Ukraine. And certainly, if President Trump was in office, he would not have dared to invade. Well, you know, we hear all the time in the fake media that America is, is, was less respected under President Trump. And I guess it depends on how you define respect. But what would be your answer? What, what, what do foreign nations think of America uh, under President Trump and then now under President Biden? It's a great question. So, Kevin... Uh, under President Trump, NATO received almost 400 billion new dollars from our NATO allies that they were they were slow paying. They they would rather pay for uh, more kindergartens and free health care and free college for their citizens and let the United States taxpayers pay for their defense. Literally, these are rich countries. This is not post World War II. These are rich peer countries. And so um, President Trump got the NATO allies to step up in a big way. They're still not doing enough, but they're doing more. Um, under President Biden, I would compare it to Obama's leading from behind. We look weak on the world stage. And so you can see Xi saber rattling, threatening Taiwan. You see Kim Jong-un in North Korea, 
ramping up, telling his uh, mil- we're going to make more more missiles and militarize quicker. And you can see China now having a bigger navy than we do. This is unacceptable. We have um, chaos around the world because of President Biden being in the White House. President Trump did what President Reagan recommended, leading peace through strength. Oh, no question. I believe that wholeheartedly. And it's the, the point is not to be the most loved. The point is not to be the most feared. The point is to be the most respected. And what I hear you say is we were more respected under President Trump than we are under President Biden and probably more than we were under President Obama. Yes, I think that our European allies who are most close to us, right, as far as their laws and, and sort of their societies actually mostly hate Republican presidents and love Democrat presidents, not understanding that the weakness of these Democrat presidents could lead to the downfall of Western society. Our civilization right now is on an anti-human de-industrialization pathway led in Europe, but we're following closely behind. This is the most dangerous time in my lifetime and perhaps since the Civil War for our nation and for our survivability. No, I agree with you. And I, we've said from the beginning of this program, we're in an economic war. We're in an external economic war, uh, China being at the primary lead, but Russia and, and North Korea uh, and Iran. But we're also in an internal economic war where there are Marxist socialists that want to take down the traditional American values, and they're trying to use our system to do it. Um, do you think we're in an economic war? Yes, we're in an economic war, China being the main opponent, but it's more than an economic war. It's a propaganda war. They're winning. It's a war in academia. They are winning by buying influence in our higher and lower education. It's a spying and industrial spying uh, war in our country. In every single aspect, the Marxist and our greatest enemy, China, is winning. Yeah, well, we're going to need to take a break. When we come back, though, I want to talk about how they're winning on our soil. They're using our institutions to attack our liberties and freedoms. You've written some great op-eds, and I want to get into those when we get back from the break. Here's a $10 bill. It's got the picture of Alexander Hamilton on the front of it. You know, it's kind of sad. When I was 10 years old, I everything that I could buy for a dollar now costs about $10. That's the cost of inflation. It's just paper. It's not backed by anything. You can't exchange it for gold and silver. Used to, but you can't do that anymore. And that's unfortunate. You know, pirates wouldn't accept this. Pirates, they wanted gold and silver. Patriots, the founders of this nation, also wanted gold and silver coin. In fact, they put a provision in the Constitution, 17 words, that said states could only make gold and silver coins tender within the states. That's why I wrote this new book, Pirate Money, Discovering the Founders' Hidden Plan for Economic Justice and Defeating the Great Reset. It will explain exactly the history of money and exactly why gold and silver coins can be made modern with new technology and a useful monetary system. PirateMoneyBook.com. I'm Kevin Sorbo. When you spend money, you consider who you're buying from and the causes they support. If you don't, then you're likely supporting companies that are trying to destroy our country and take away our freedoms. Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They're a cell phone company and a good one. They offer nationwide coverage on the best 4G and 5G networks along with 100% U.S.-based customer support. But here's the deal. Patriot Mobile's mission has nothing to do with cell phones. They carry out their mission by giving back millions of dollars every year to Christian conservative causes that are actively engaged in the fight to save America. Voting is no longer enough to beat the woke. We have to band together, support like-minded companies, and vote with our dollars. That's how we win. Stop supporting companies that want to destroy America and join Patriot Mobile today by visiting PatriotMobile.com or call 972-PATRIOT. Ambassador Sands, you've written recently about the Biden energy policy, and I've got two articles I'm looking at. One is hands off our appliances, President Biden, and the other one is Biden's radical climate agenda is hurting families and robbing America of its independence. 
Before the break, we were talking about uh, how we have an economic war both against a foreign enemy, primarily China, but also domestically here at home, Marxists funded perhaps by China, but operating against the interests of the American people. Explain what your op-eds were saying, hands off our appliances. Sure. And, and it's not just the U.S., it's the entire West. There's a deindustrialization agenda. And um, Russia, China, India want nothing to do with this, right? Um, they intend to grow economically and use every kind of energy at their fingertips and that they can buy or steal. Uh, but um, here in the United States, we see that um, Biden, his administration, starting on day one, they undid all of the great Trump policies that made us Inde energy independent. And that was for the first time in many, many years. And we were on our way to being energy dominant. We want to be energy dominant. This is important for our economic success, but also for our national security. We're now once again beholden to foreign nations like Saudi Arabia and even, believe it or not, Venezuela with that dirty, dirty energy. Their energy comes out seven times dirtier than American energy because here in the United States, we're highly regulated. Our harvesting is cleaner than anywhere in the world. Our pipes move it cleanly. We refine cleaner than anywhere in the world. But under President Trump, he took away, he promised to take away two regulations for every new one. President Biden has increased regulations even more than President Obama did. And it's, a, it's a, like a tax on Americans, about $5,000 a year. President Trump promised one, uh, one new regulation, two would go away. By the end of his tenure, seven regulations went away for every new regulation. So the, the regulatory war is another assault on us. But the Biden administration in their deindustrialization efforts are attempting to end fossil fuel use. Full fuel use. They're debanking them. They're um, making it very difficult for companies to invest in energy. I don't think we've had a new refinery in many decades. We just had our first new nuclear plant go in almost, I mean, since I've been an adult. So this has, there's been um, denial by delay has been the plan out of our energy um, department for decades. So now what do we have? Well, we're trying to according to this administration, transition to renewables. But we're, we're so far away from being uh, reliant on renewables. It, and, and to make matters like more perverse, we have enough energy in the ground under places like Texas and Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, um, other states, that we are never going to run out of our clean American energy. So my goal is to increase our harvesting our refining, our moving, but also bring back things like mining for rare earths and processing for rare earths right here at home. Make sure we make pharmaceuticals right here at home because all of these things that we rely on the PRC for, the People's Republic of China, make us vulnerable to our greatest enemy. No question about that. And when you talk about this, they're also limiting consumer choices and they're doing it by fiat regulation and mandate. You can't buy a gas car after 2030 in California, a gasoline powered car. You can't buy a gas uh, powered appliance. And yet America, we've reduced our carbon emissions more than any other major nation of the world. And we've done it by moving to clean natural gas. Now they want to eliminate clean natural gas, which you know, in the end, people will be burning wood-fired stoves again because they won't be able to get the heat. And we've got an electric grid that's already massively overtaxed. And we're going to force every appliance to be electric. We're going to force... And then you won't even be able to have a gas-powered generator if there is an EMP hit or if we just had the grid fail because we've overtaxed it with all the electric cars. I mean, this is an insane policy that the Biden administration is forcing on us that's going to take us back to a pre-industrial era. Is that on purpose? It is on purpose, Kevin, and that's what's so shocking and perverse. So uh, first of all, we know it's an anti-human agenda. So this is a really, I will call it evil. It's an evil anti-human agenda. But I hope, Kevin, that leaders in these different states, whoever has standing, is it the state's attorney general, whoever has, has standing needs to sue 
to block the transition to electric cars. Consumers don't want this. This is a top-down Marxist plot to control what people can buy. That's not the American way. Even China doesn't do that. This is really, really anti-American. And so whoever has standing needs to sue to stop, whether it's electric cars, banning gas stoves, which they've already done in some counties, in some states. And I think California and New York are saying in new construction in certain areas, no new gas stoves. I like gas stoves. I prefer it. I want to have that consumer choice. And that's my right. But it's also water heaters and dryers, wash machines. It's like you said, your backup generator. California wants to ban those. Who has blackouts? Places like California. Yeah, no, no question again. And, and with this push, they're also looking at central bank digital currencies where they could line item veto any spending. So you go to Home Depot and you want to buy it. Maybe your social credit score is not high enough. You can't buy a gas appliance. But maybe the person who voted the right way, said the right thing on Twitter, and conformed in other areas, they might get the privilege of having a gas-powered stove. But you mentioned attorney generals. Here in Texas, we had one who was very aggressively suing the Biden administration. And for, you know, he got impeached. Uh, Ken Paxson was impeached. You got to wonder if this lawfare thing that they're doing against President Trump and then against maybe our attorney general and so forth, this looks like a complete Marxist takeover. It does. And we need Republicans and independents who are willing to stand up I want to see fighters. I want to see a Republican style Nancy Pelosi that's going to get in there and make things happen for the good of the American people, because this is this is a destructive agenda. And you talk about having a social credit score with with, a um, you know, the um, new currency. Can you imagine trying to buy a gun with a digital currency that won't be allowed and many other things that people enjoy? So. And, and then you see this, you know, the BRICS nations trying to set up their own literally alternative to the dollar for trade. So we have we have fires all over the world because of Biden's very bad leadership. Well, we had a solution we crafted in the economic war room. I hope you'll take a look at my new book, Pirate Money, because Pirate Money talks about the constitutional answer to that very problem. We're gonna to have to take another break. When we come back, let's begin to talk about some of the solutions. What can we do to fight back? Not literally take a gun, but actually fight back. talking with Ambassador Carla Sands, and she did a terrific job representing America uh, during the Trump administration in Denmark and areas. And she, she's really got a handle on the economic war, both the foreign one facing China, talking about uh, banning Huawei because they would be spying on everything and everyone, but also domestically the effort to try and just really decarbonize which really means dehumanize the planet, because we're carbon beings ourselves. That's who they really want to eliminate. And the elite, she's been around them. She's been with all the societies and knows all of them. So we've talked about the problems, and now we need solutions. And one of the big solutions she's already brought up is to stand up, to bring, not literally, but figuratively, a gun to the knife fight, because they're fighting us with lawfare, they're, they're robbing us from jobs, they're trying to silence us on social media, how do we fight back, Ambassador? How we fight back, first of all, is never backing down, not compromising, but being on the offense. If you look at the left and how they have moved our society further and further to the left, 
that now Republicans, we talk like John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy was a famous Democrat. They have literally moved society to the left. We have not won. We've given in on every step. So what I want to see are Republicans that have a spine that will fight for the everyday man and woman and child in our country. What does it mean? It means fighting so that we don't have runaway inflation by restricting how much government is spending and wasting. It means stopping these multi-trillion dollar bills like were passed in the last Congress. It means making sure energy is affordable like it was under President Trump where we were spending less than $2 a gallon on gas. It means groceries can be afforded by the average middle class family and the working people, seniors on a fixed income. We have to take care of our own. It means not sending billions and billions of dollars to Ukraine. That's that's Europe's war. Europe needs to pay for their war. We have really big fish to fry in Asia. Taiwan is being threatened by China as well as us. Xi is saying prepare for war. And literally Raytheon, one of our most important defense companies, the CEO recently just said, we're not going to be able to, we don't think, stop getting our components from China. Well, how do you think we're going to be able to wage a part of war if we're getting components from China. It means you won't have anything from Raytheon if that's the case. The the DOD has been telling our defense companies to get out of China, make this stuff uh, in a near or home uh, country, and clearly they're not listening. So we have very big problems. You're right. And every one of those problems has an economic component to it, the, whether it's inflation, whether it is manufacturing of pharmaceuticals or, or equipment for, for uh, military. Every one of them has an economic component and it has an economic answer. And that's what we do in the economic war room is we come up with answers. Uh, for example, I mentioned before the break pirate money. Uh, Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution says that no state shall make anything but gold and silver coins tender within the state. What if you had gold and silver on deposit in a state and you had an alternative monetary system where you could use a debit card and you could spend your gold and silver or you could exchange it freely? So I'll send you information on that because I want you to see what we're doing there. And then ESG, which is a serious problem. So we offer LSV, Liberty, Security and Values. All this money that investors have put into BlackRock is their money. It's not BlackRock's money, but BlackRock has been voting their shares to further the ESG agenda, to defund and debank our American energy industry and so forth. So if we get the American people to wake up, they can take their money out of uh, bad investments and put it into liberty, security, and value investments. And then the World Economic Forum that wants you to own nothing and be happy and eat bugs and all of that. I mean, you saw this front lines firsthand. Is that really what Klaus Schwab is pushing? That's what he said with his own mouth. So I can only take him at his own words. And we know Elon Musk said that ESG is the devil. Uh, and it is it, it doesn't resonate with Judeo-Christian values, certainly. This is um, these guys who control about 85 percent of all the investments, Larry Fink and that and that whole group, 85 percent. They're imposing a leftist Marxist pro-China agenda that's getting us more and more invested in China rather than investing in manufacturing at home. It's increasing our risk as investors because we know there's rule by law, not of law in China. You saw they just recently raided Bain Capital and the US government has said to American executives, do not travel to China. If that doesn't tell you what you need to know, I mean, I don't know how you can wake up American investors. We we have to invest our pension funds in pro-America companies. And if you own a company, take care of your people, don't offshore those jobs take care of our country and the people in our country. It has to be so that we have opportunity here at home. Well, that's the purpose of this program is to wake American investors up. And then uh, we have a sister program called the National Security Investment Consultant Institute at Liberty University, where we train financial advisors to help their clients weaponize their money. So if you're watching this and you say, I want my investments to preserve America and Judeo-Christian values, then you need an NSIC advisor. And if you're an advisor watching this, you need to sign up and take one of our eight-week online courses where you'll learn from brilliant people. I hope, Ambassador Sands, we could include you in our future curriculum. Would you be available for that? 
Well, let's see. It's possible. I'm doing a CEO summit at Liberty University this October. We'll be there. And Amer- you will. Great. And America First Policy Institute does a lot of work on pro-American business and, and the looking at the economy from the eyes of how do we grow America's economy to benefit all American people so that our kids and grandkids can do better than we did, because that's the sacred promise of our country. Uh, Ambassador, how can people follow your work? Is carlasands.com a good website? carlasands.com is a great website. I'm on Twitter at Carla H. Sands. I'm on Instagram and on Facebook, and you're welcome to follow me. And um, and I'm starting right now a 501c4 called Fix Pennsylvania. It's the same template that they've used in Florida to flip Florida from a swing state to a red state by registering conservative voters. So that will be a 501c4 live in about three weeks. And, uh, and I hope people will support it if they care about our country and if they care about winning in 2024. Absolutely. And then America First Policy Institute, you can see at AmericaFirstPolicy.com. And that'd be another good place to support. We sure appreciate you being a part of the economic war room. I think the work that you did for the Trump administration and really for the American people was fantastic. Uh, Great ambassador, excellent work. And I think the work you're doing now, if you can turn Pennsylvania back uh, to an America supporting state, uh, that would be phenomenal. So thank you. Look, what we're doing here is all about winning the economic war and having Ambassador Sands and other people like that, we're bringing that information to you. That's why we're training financial advisors at Liberty University. You can learn more about Ambassador Sands and our free economic battle plan. You can get a copy at economicwarroom.com. It's totally free, just sign up. And remember, what we see as a marketplace, our enemies view as a battle space. This is Kevin Freeman from the Economic War Room. (laughs) 